Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now today we'll be doing a different type of video. We won't be upgrading the 3D printer, but instead today we'll be upgrading our 3D printing design and knowledge. Today we'll be looking at a deeper dive on how to use screws in 3D printed designs. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. So if you've done much 3D printing before, especially with your own designs, you've probably ran into situations where you've needed to join two 3D printed parts together and you've used screws before. Or you've done designs where you're joining a non-3D printed part to your 3D printed parts and also use screws. There's a lot of great videos out there on YouTube on how to do print in place nuts or even melt in your own threaded inserts. But I haven't seen many videos on the most simple solution of all, and that's taking a normal screw and threading it directly into your 3D printed part. Now this doesn't work for all cases, but it does work for a majority of applications where you have low torque and you don't need a ton of reusability. Like this 3D printed game case where I screwed these pieces together once and now they stay that way. Or with this 3D printed printing head where I occasionally swap out fans, I've reused these screws at least 10 times in this design. And now I'm going to turn to Fusion 360 to design a 3D printed test part so we can test out all the different parameters associated with screwing. And now I'm going to save several different copies of this part and vary the screw hole size, anywhere from 2.5 millimeters up to 3 millimeters. Okay, now we've got our first test part printed out here. This is the 2.7 millimeter version. So before we get started with the testing, we need to verify these hole sizes. So these holes were 2.7 millimeters in the model. And if we go ahead and measure it here, holy smokes, getting about 2.4 millimeters. So that is quite a bit smaller. So we definitely cannot start the screw testing if we don't have the right hole size. So let's go take a look at some settings in Kira and see if we can adjust this. Okay, so now we can see our part here in Kira. And what's happening when we're 3D printing is our holes are getting squished a little bit smaller than we want. So we're going to go into settings here and we're going to type in horizontal. So now the settings here, there's horizontal expansion, which is expansion of the overall part, initial layer horizontal expansion, which is your elephant's foot, and then hole horizontal expansion. So we're going to select those now. And the one we care about specifically is hole horizontal expansion. So I'm going to put a value of 0.2 in here, which will make the diameter of our holes about 0.2 millimeters bigger. All right, here's the 2.7 millimeter part after we adjusted the horizontal expansion factor on the holes. So let's see where they're at now. 2.7 millimeters, 2.7, 2.7. It is spot on. All right, so let's get started with the screw testing. And now we'll print out our different models laying flat on the bed. Okay, so here if you see the testing setup, I'll have this 3D printed block here with five different holes, and I'll take this M3 screw and screw it into each of the different holes. And here I've got stacked up four spring washers separated by four regular washers, using this as a way to put some consistent force onto the hole so that I'm going to tighten this until all of these flatten, and then I will loosen it and repeat the process and see how many times I can tighten this until the hole strips out. All right, we'll be starting with a three millimeter here and let's go ahead and measure the holes. So we got right at three millimeter. And at three millimeters here, our screw just drops into the hole. It doesn't grab at all. So this one fails the test. Next up, we can do the 2.9 millimeter. And the 2.9 millimeter hole is stripping out before it can even flatten the washers. So this one is going to be a fail too. And next up we have the 2.8 millimeter. So let's get started on this one. All right, this one is starting to grab the threads actually. We've got all the washers flattened, fully backed out, and it's stripped. So we got one successful. And if you're interested, here's the testing results for the other holes. Here's the 2.7 millimeter part. The first hole ended up getting eight successful uses, and here are the results for the rest of the holes. And now for the 2.6 millimeter part, on the first hole we got 22 successful uses, and then on the rest of the holes, here are the results for those. And before we go any further, I've got a new part that just got finished printing in the background. 
because we're getting into so many turns on these parts and I don't want to get carpal tunnel, I printed out this torque multiplier here that we're going to put on the screwdriver that's going to make it easier to get through all these turns. Now we're moving on to the 2.5 millimeter, and I'll say this part was a pretty big challenge just to get the screw started because the hole was so small. And after a lot of screwing, we finally got to failure after 32 successful uses, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. And here are the results from the rest of the holes, and now I'd say I'm ready for a little break. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. So far, what we've been testing has been the scenario on the left where we're screwing with the 3D printed layers. So now I've taken our test results and plotted them on this graph, and we can see that the smaller the hole size, the more amount of uses we can get out of the hole. But the trade-off there being, the smaller the hole, the harder it is to get the screw started into the part. And now let's do one more test. The part on the left, I've actually modeled in the M3 threads. You can see that as I roll down the model layers. I do have to say, modeling in the threads made the model much larger, as about 5,000 kilobytes instead of normally around 400 kilobytes. So now looking at the results of the M3 threaded hole, it was pretty similar to the 2.6mm hole, about 18 uses on average, except this time it was a lot easier to get the screw started and thread into the part. So now let's switch over to printing the part vertically and screwing into the layers. And since these pieces were printed vertically, uh, some of these holes are a little bit deformed, they're not exactly round, and they're a little bit smaller than they were designed. So this one was designed at 2.8mm, but actually when we measure it, it's about 2.6 millimeter in this direction and 2.5 in this direction. So we'll keep that in mind as we do the testing. And now we'll take our same setup with the M3 screw and washers and lock washers. And we're gonna start going down the line here and see if it can screw into this without breaking. And if it does, can we get the washers to flatten without breaking? So we'll start on the top here where the hole to edge distance is the smallest and that'll be the weakest one of course and then we'll work our way down and see how the results improve when we have more material on each side. So the screw is able to insert without breaking, so that is good. Now we'll see if we can flatten the washers. All right, seems like we made it with no issue. Oh, so we only got one successful use there. Now for the second hole, we got five good ones. For the third hole, 10 uses before this one's stripped out. And now for the fourth hole, and it's stripped out, so we got eight uses out of this hole. And now hole number five. And it's stripped out, so we got eight good uses. Next up we'll be starting the 2.7 millimeter design. And this one, the actual hole, is about 2.5 millimeters. All right, now we'll start the first hole on the 2.7 millimeter design. And it broke before we could flatten the washers. Okay, now for the second hole. Ew. That was a big break. So just one successful attempt before that one was broken. All right, now let's start with the third hole. And five. Hole number four. Ooh. And it broke on number nine, so eight successful ones before it split in half. All right, and the final hole here. All right, going for the second Titan here. And it's stripped out because it's split open on the left side here. So only one use out of this thick one. And next, let's get on to the 2.6 millimeter test piece. All right, so the first hole, a little difficult to get started and it split immediately. All right, let's try hole number two then. And that one split as well. All right, hole number three here, let's go. And just about one use, but it cracked right before we got those lock washers flattened. All right, hole number four here. And there it's stripped. Cracked and stripped. Now for hole number five with the thickest section here. And the second time here, it split open. Okay, last and probably least, we have the 2.5 millimeter version printed here. We can do some measurement on the hole, and yeah, it's about 2.4 millimeters. It is really hard to get these screws started. So I just got this one started, and it broke. All right, hole number two, let's go. And that one broke again. Hole number three, let's go. Broken. 
hole number four here. Get split open there and the screw is stripped out. So there we can see our best performance was really out of this 2.8 millimeter design. Most of them were able to actually tighten without breaking except for the first thin section here. And when we got smaller than that, the part had a tendency to just break in half. And since the 2.8 really did the best, um, I think it was only natural to go up and try a 2.9 millimeter. So that's what I printed here. And we're gonna see if this one works better or the holes are just a little bit too big and too loose. So as with the rest, the holes printed a little bit small. It's 2.9 in the model, but about 2.8 when it was all said and done. Okay, so here we are the first hole. Actually, it's gripping pretty well, so that's a good sign. 11, it's stripped out, so we got 10 uses. And now for the second hole, and we got 10 uses out of this one. And now for the third hole, and this hole we just got four uses out of. Now we'll do the fourth hole, seven uses. Hole number five. And the fifth hole here broke after 10 uses, and the part actually cracked apart. I printed out a three millimeter version of the part, we're gonna get the support material taken out and do a final test. All right, and here's the three millimeter part. And if we look at this one, it's measuring at about 2.9 to 2.8 millimeters. Here's the first hole. And at eight, it's stripped out, so we got seven reuses. All right, on to the second hole. And this one also stripped out on the eighth try, so seven reuses. Now onto the third hole here. This one, we got five uses before it's stripped out. Hole number four. And we got nine uses out of this hole before it's stripped out. And hole number five was just three uses before it's stripped out. Now let's look at the results summary of screwing into the layers. We can see this has the opposite trend of the previous testing. Now the smaller we make the hole, the less uses we get out of it due to the part cracking open. From here we can see the sweet spot was about a 2.9 millimeter size hole in the design. But just like before, I decided to print one more piece. This time we have the actual M3 threaded holes into the model. And actually this time it yielded the best results by far. Since the threads were already somewhat printed into the model, the threads on the screw weren't trying to dig in and create their own threads, creating pressure and splitting the layers apart. And you should try to avoid designing your part so the screw is threaded into the layers like this. But if you can't avoid it, I would recommend modeling in the M3 threads. One other rule of thumb, especially when designing holes into the layers, was to try and keep the hole at least the diameter of the screw away from the edge of the part. And actually, the more material you can put around the screw hole, the better off you'll be. And for a final summary, if you have a low torque application and you don't need a ton of reuse, you can screw directly into 3D printed parts. The picture on the left is screwing with the layers. This is the preferred design. Before you do it, you'll want to calibrate your hole size with horizontal expansion factors. And then 2.6 millimeter or modeled in M3 threads will give you the best results for reusability. And for the picture on the right, screwing into the layers, you should try to avoid this design if possible. But if you need to, modeling in the actual M3 threaded holes works the best and you should stay at least the hole diameter away from the edge. And if you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to thank you and give you a little extra bonus content. All right, now I'm gonna show you a hack that you can do if you have a hole that's stripped out, just like these holes here we have in this test piece. So many of you probably have a lot of these laying around. This is the little purge line that you get from the beginning of the print. So what you can do is take this purge line and insert it into a hole that's been stripped out and then start your screw into that hole and this is gonna give it a little more bite and you can reuse it a couple more times. And just like that, we're able to get this screw enough life to tighten one more time. So we're going to take and trim that off, and nobody will ever know. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.